Says Thank you again for doing thing. this. This is wonderful. Well, we'll <laughs> see if you still think so at the end. Uh, right. My name's Ned. I'm the Allen 22 moderator, as most of you already know. You should now see a JSESH window. Uh, can you all see a JSESH window? If anybody can't see a JSESH window, tell me. But it should be here. Yes? No, a lot of nodding going on. Now, yeah. In the JSESH window, you'll see two fields. There's this great big field where my cursor is now. That is where you build up your hieroglyphs. At the bottom, there's another bit here. Uh, where my cursor is now that is where you can enter stuff from the keyboard you cannot enter anything from the keyboard into the big field here but nevertheless that's where you build up your hieroglyphs what i'm going to do is uh, enter a basic sentence in egyptian the basic center sentence is my name is ned which any of you who've had a look at uh, lesson seven will know is Rennie Ned. So it's a very simple one. The first thing I would do is to go over to the file, click on that and come down to format. Now here we have a choice of entering the data in lines or in columns. I'm going to enter into lines. Underneath that, you have the option of doing left to right or right to left. Now, as you probably all know, the default in Egyptian is right to left, so we'll do that. Uh, it then vanishes. I want to go back to it because I also want to center small signs, uh, which means that anything that isn't full scale will be in the middle of a line not at the bottom so it looks nicer now the word rennie or ren begins with uh, the mouth and then has the wave so to build it up here the way i'd normally do it is go down to basic hieroglyphs at the bottom this button here click on it and you see a lot of hieroglyphs uh, I then go to parts of the human body because the mouse is part of a human body. And across here, we find the mouse at D21. Click on it and it appears up here. We then want the wave. The wave is sky, earth and water. So we go here, move across and find it here. Uh, the word e, meaning my, can be written as a wee man, but normally we, and normally that's what we do. But I'm going to write it the other way, which is as a reed leaf. And there is a reason for that. This is a why we know that it was pronounced e, because sometimes the Egyptians wrote it as a reed. So if we go to trees and plants, and there's the leaf, uh, the reed at M17. Uh, I'm now going to do my name. So start with a wave again. Uh, you'll see it's sometimes a bit hard to keep the your to manage this bit at the bottom. Uh, but uh, we'll try our best. Uh, now, D, D is the hand, so we go over here, D46, and as I'm a man, I put a wee man at the end. So that is basically how you get the hieroglyphs there. You will see down at the bottom, it's appearing with the uh, codes for the hieroglyphs. However, what we don't want is something that looks like this. We want the hieroglyphs to look attractive. So we want the first one on top of the second one. The way we do that is 
I didn't have these things that I'm going to move down it down a bit is to go like that and do group manipulation so go there and group vertically uh, we've then got this here and we'd like that in the same quadrat it looks like it is in the same quadrat but in fact it isn't because if we go to file and we change the format to columns you'll see it's not in the same quadrat so we put the format back to text in lines and what we do is go like that group manipulation group horizontally and i'm going to do exactly the same with my name here group vertically and then group horizontally right the next thing i want to do is to save that and i want to save it in such a way i can reclaim it with uh jsesh in the future so i do file save as and it normally comes up yes i'm going to save it onto the desktop uh, i'm going to save it as a pdf file created by jsesh and i'm going to put call it name dot PDF. Annoyingly, you have to put the PDF in or it fails at some point. Uh, just to show you that that works, I'll get rid of that. And here's another window I put up earlier. There you'll see my PDF there. So now I can do file, open or open recent name.pdf and up it pops. Uh, it would be nice if I could move it down, but this is in the way, so I cannot. Uh, I can move that. Uh, right, uh, there are other ways of entering it. You can, as an alternative, enter it directly in here at the bottom. You can do it there by entering the code. So the mouth is D21. We then put a hyphen. The wavy line is N35. We put a hyphen. The read is M17. Then we put a hyphen. The wavy line is N35 and then a hyphen. The hand is D46, I think. We'll see. Then a hyphen, then A1. And then press return. If we didn't press return and did anything else in here, it would all vanish. So it's important to press return whenever you put anything there before you move it anywhere else. Uh, now, of course, here, it's not in the nice quadrats. We do that with asterisks and colons. So D, to do a vertical quadrat, you'd put a colon in there. I'm putting it right down here and get rid of the hyphen. And another colon here. and next to each other you put an asterisk down here and an asterisk down here if we then go to the end and press enter we get that it's not quite what we wanted is it uh, and that is because it's doing the asterisks before it's doing the colons to make sure it's how we want it we have to put in math symbols of brackets. So just like when you're doing maths, you put brackets around the first one there, and brackets around this one here. Press enter, and it's how we want it. 
Right, the third way of entering data is at the bottom and is by using manual de codage or the code handbook. In this, we can, for the alpha, the uniliterals, we can enter the manual decodage rather than the code. So here, if we put R hyphen N hyphen I hyphen N hyphen D, and then unfortunately, we've got to put A1 because there's no manual coding manual for the little man and we get that again so we've entered it in a different way which maybe you can remember easier uh, and it's a coding handbook way which is the way we normally do things on glyph study anyway so if you wanted to write jed you'd have to put a capital d hyphen little d like that now you can see why i put this read leaf here it's so i could type in i and when i say the coding handbook they are the original coding handbook ones not the symbols that we use for alan so it's an i not a j and then in the same way with this one as we did before we can put the brackets around the colon, another bracket, an asterisk, and that's, I'm just doing the first one there, but I could have done it for the Jed as, the Ned as well. Right, uh, what I want to show you now is, what if I was a king? Uh, and I wanted to be in a cartouche. The way you do that is you go up to the name you want in the cartouche, you make it all blue, and you can do that by doing cursor there, moving the cursor to there, and doing the shift just before you do it. If you then go in group manipulation, you'll see cartouches here at the bottom. Lots and lots of different sorts of cartouches. The first one here is a normal one. So if I do that, and look, I'm now a king. It's that simple to get crowned. Now, uh, there's one other thing I want to show you before I uh, ask the questions, and that is a ligature. Have you heard of a ligature? Now, what a ligature is in terms of Egyptian hieroglyphs is when you put one sign inside the other. So here we have Jed. Uh, we cannot put it underneath it because it would be right down here. We actually want it inside. We want the hand inside the cobra. So the way we can do it, and it might not be quite how we want it, is to go up to group manipulation and ligature elements. It's probably how we want it, but it might not be. If we wanted it slightly different, we can do that again by putting shift down and then clicking on the end. So what I'm doing here is I click there to put the cursor there. I put, hold down shift, click the cursor there, uh, then group, manipulation, edit group. And here, I can move that if I wanted it there. Which you might think might look nicer. Uh, there are a few other odd things you can do which you'll discover if you look. For example, you can insert uh, red and black punctuation. You can shade elements. Uh, shading basically means you can't really see it, but you think it's probably that. Uh, philological markdown up. You'll have seen that, but it's different ways of when 
the scribe's not done it properly, or you think the scribe should be something else, or you're guessing, or something like that. And you'd have to look up in the book and work out what all these different things, markups are. Right, that's all I want to do, because we've only got just over half an hour. <laughs>